going to teach you how to make a program for a blinking LED and afterwards we are going to have a hardware implementation of the program. Click on new project then select microchip embedded standalone project then click next. Then from the family, since we're going to use a PIC 184520, we're going to click Advanced 8-bit Family. Then we go and select PIC 18F 4520. Then we click Next. Then we choose PIC 3 if you're going to be using PIC 3 Then you, use, you select the compiler XC8. That's, that is the one we're going to be using. Then you name our project. I'm going to name mine. Blinking LED. Then click finish. So you first of all configure the configuration bits. Uh, we go to target memory views. Configuration bits. You generate. First of all, click the oscillation. I want to achieve oscillation. So we have the internal oscillator block, where we don't need an crystal oscillator, which is external. Or we can use the HS oscillator. But for our project, we are going to be using the internal oscillator, which means our ports will be free for our port function. So you, use, you click internal oscillator block. Then again, we go on PB Add-in. We click on data input output on reset. And lastly, LVP. We click it disabled. And after that, we are done on the configuration bits. Generate your source code to output. Then you copy everything that is generated. Go to header, new, C header file. Then you name our file configuration. You can name it whatever you want, as long as you can, you can remember it. You can finish. Then we select everything which comes by the file. Then we paste what we have copied, which is our configuration bits. Then we add this next piece of code that we are going to use for our delay. So we are going to be using 8 megahertz, uh, which is our frequency. So we have to write 8. 8 million and now we go to our source files we make a new file which is our cement file that is that is where we are going to make our main program that is going to run and blink the lead I'm going to name my main click on finish then I'm going to remove all these parts that are necessary Then we're going to include some files. Okay, we're also going to remove that part here. Okay, we're going to include some files. First of all, we're going to include our configuration bits. Then next, we include the pkdata file, so that we can use we can use the registers. To know about the registers, we will, we will learn about them later. Okay, I've already made my program, so I'm just going to copy it from where I had it and paste it. There is my program. Okay, I'm going to explain every line of the code so that you won't get lost. Okay, that is our main method. Uh, we have the OSCON register there. Okay, first of all, on the top we have the standard input output library header. Just have to include that one. Then we have the standard library. Then we have our configuration bits, which I taught you how to make. 
how to make them then we have the applicator file then from there we go on to the main method we have the OSCON register that is going to describe the oscillation frequency we have the trace d bits rd1 which is going to configure rd1 as an output pin then we have the code which is y1 y1 means it's going to loop forever then port d just port d and then just to, os to change the state by toggling on off on off then you clean and build uh, for that loop there we have delay 50 milliseconds then 50 milliseconds times multiplied by 20 which is what which is the the iteration will give us one second delay we click we click clean and build then it cleans and build okay we have an error there so we have to correct it uh i discovered that there's a part there's a underscore that i put there which mustn't be there so on the configuration piece file so i have to correct that one okay I corrected it, clean on the armor with the brush there, it cleans and it builds. Yeah, built successful. Means our code is correct is now successful. It's now successfully built. We go on to Proteus, new project. We use Proteus for simulation. I'm going to name mine uh, blinking a LED. Click on next. Click on next, click on next, we don't need all these things. Click on next and click on finish. Then you change our template to the component part. Then you click on P. Then you type our components which want, want the peak 18F4520. Then it's there, we double click it. And it comes onto our tool library. Then we, click, we type resistor. It comes there, we double click it. And it's on our canvas there we, on, where we have our instruments we want to use. If you want to type LED, then I'm going to choose a red LED. Okay, we have it there. And you click on OK. Okay, click on pick. And I place my pick mail controller there. Let me just zoom it up. And I put my resistor on a, close to RD1 since I'm going to be using RD1. Then my lid next to it, I rotate it. Okay, there I have it. Then I go to that two, two list where I, I'm going to get the ground. Okay, I'm, first of all, I'm going to use the power for the reset pin. I put the resistor. Must be a resistor there. Okay. I'm going to be using plus 5 volts. I click on OK. Then I finish on my connections. Then the lead has to be connected to the ground. So I'm going to pick the ground there from my tool list. And I put my ground there. And I complete the electrical connection. Then I'm going to load the code into the controller so you have to go and find out where your project has been saved or MPLA project and it usually live in a, a format of an extension of X so mine is located in my C library in my C drive sorry users under my username then MPLA X projects I named mine blinking led there it is an extension of X then you go on dist default production blinking led X must be X file, and you have to change also the processor clock frequency. Mine was eight, so I'm going to put eight megahertz. Then I click on OK. Then we run. I play the. I click the play to run the simulation. Okay, my LED is not blinking. Oh, it's probably the resistor there, so I have to change it. Yeah, you have to be very careful here. Yeah, the resistor must be in the ranges of uh, 100 ohms to 330 ohms. I I run again. Yes, it's now working. It's now blinking. Therefore, it means my code. I can now move on to the hardware part. Okay, here I have the hardware that I'm going to use to implement the hardware for the program that I've just made. Here I have the PIC 18A4520, the voltage regulator LM7805, a 12 kilo ohm resistor to connect to the reset pin, 
4.7 microfarads capacitor 50 volts to filter the the output from the regulator a 330 ohm resistor to connect to the lead and here i have the breadboard that i'm going to use as you can see i've put these wires just to make sure that the con there's continuity from this side to this side here what these are the lines that i'm going to use to for the ground and the power here i have a bunch of wires to use for the connection i also have a multimeter to check my the continuity of the connection that i would have made and the voltage as well here is the development board that i'm going to be using to program my my peak since i don't have a peak at three and i'm going to be using this 8.7 volt battery to power all this setup connect with the development board now i'm going to program my peak microcontroller so i have the software already installed micro prog suit and you don't need an administrator for you to work and i say yes okay here it is and now i load the what the x file I'm now going to load the X file. Blinking LED. Okay. Then I'm going to write, I'm going to write my pick micro control. It's going to load. As you can see a blue light is going to flash over here. Showing me that you are writing something into the what into the pick micro controller. Here's what the pick micro controller. As you can see, it shows you right, right there that's what d1 is what is blinking but we're not going to use the development board we want to go, we want to set up this in hardware not using this development board because in your projects you might not want to use this development board you might want to use your own equipment that's why we are going to have a hardware tutorial okay you are going to start with other implementation okay this is my peak so I'm going to use this piece of paper to help me identify the pins. I don't have to count the pins anymore. Let me apply a piece of solo tape. Okay, it's all done. Now I'm going to put it on my breadboard. You just plug it wherever you want to plug it. I'm going to plug mine right here. Okay, press it right down until you feel like it cannot go any further. Then, first of all, I want to connect my power pins so I'm going to use this outer line here this line at the at the extreme right here is my power line I hope you all know how to use a breadboard I'm not going to go over that tutorial so my VD is this pin right here so I'm going to put this wire here and then connect it to the outer line then I'm going to put on the ground pin again which is the the pin just just right after the power pin and I'm going to connect it to the to the ground which is the next line which is adjacent to the power line which is the second line from the out extreme extreme right this line right here then as you can see our pick has two pins for the power and the ground which is right here and right here so they are both used there are some advantages to using this which are which relate to the signal noise so if you use both pins the signal noise will be very low compared to one who uses one pin so i'm going to i'm going to connect the vdd then as well connect the vss to the ground as well so the, just as the way i've done this side here that is the way i'm going to go about this side my extreme right is what is my power the next line to the extreme right is what is the ground same here my extreme left is the power the, the line next to the extreme left is what is the ground then what's next okay i'm going to connect this resistor this 12 kilo ohm resistor to the what to the to the mclr pin to pull down the vcc power supply then we are going to be using what rd1 from our code rd1 is going to be what is going to be the pin that is going to flush the lead so i'm going to connect this 330 ohm resistor then i'm going to use a green lead this green lead here so 
I connect the longer terminal, which is what, which is the anode, to to the same potential as what is the leg of this pin right here. To the same potential right here. Then I'm going to take the other pin from the lead and connect it what to ground. Okay. Then next up, using my voltage regulator, I'm going to power this whole circuitry. So I place it right over here. As you all know, okay, before I press it, the extreme left pin is what is the input pin, the middle pin is the ground pin. The extreme right pin is what is the output pin. I place it right over there. Then I'm going to use two wires that are going to get power from the, the regulated power. So my middle pin, from my middle pin right here, I connect what? I connect the pin that is going to go on ground. Like I said before, my second pin from the from the right from here is what is going to be the ground. My second line of pins from the right is going to be the ground. And what? And my extreme what? My extreme my extreme left pin. Sorry, my extreme right pin is what is going to be what is going to be the output. It's going to be the output. Then I connect it to what? I come to the extreme right, which is what which is the power supply, right? Then what's next? I'm going to connect my two wires that are going to provide power to this what to this circuitry. Okay. Connect the green to the input and the purple to what to the ground. Then, okay. Yeah. Uh, let us now put the the capacitor to smoothen out the rig, the power supply so just connect to the ground ground there just connect the the, lo, the shorter terminal to the ground and the longer terminal to the what to the power supply which is the VD, v, vdd 5 volts like that just just connect like that okay Okay, as you can see, it's now working. Uh, my battery, the problem, uh, it's shredded out here. It doesn't have continuity, so it wasn't working well. So I'm, I now changed to this switch mode power supply to supply my power circuit. Now, as you can see, it's now working. It's blinking, turning on one second and turning off one second. Thank you for watching.